There are a few things that I noticed during several watches of the show before the finale that I didn't mention on this channel. Well, simply because I knew that they were clues, but I didn't know exactly how they fit into the larger picture, just like the thread in the sweater analogy that Kenny mentioned. However, episode 210 shed some light on these clues. Now, there are some who watch theories on YouTube about mystery shows only to leave a lengthy comment about how the creator of the video is reaching and looking way too deep into the show. And some have even gone as far as saying that the writers are too stupid to come up with such elaborate clues. Even though the clues are there in the show to either help you figure it out or divert your attention in another direction, even though the showrunners of From have stated that there is nothing in this show or in the background that is there by mistake. So let's get into the goods. Let's see, how should I start with the light or the clues? I'll start with the clues. Broken glass. You have the broken glass in the RV and other structures. However, Sarah mentions to Nathan about picking up broken glass and cutting herself. Then Kenny's mom cuts herself on some broken glass and it's Sarah who comes to help her pick it up. Now let that take us to a scene in the finale where Jade is breaking glass to help him better understand the symbol. The first time we see him do this is with the bottles, but this time he has a vision of Tom. And no, it's not actually Tom or a ghost of Tom. It's Jade having a conversation with himself, like Boyd and Cotri. Boyd and Cotri connected before Cotri's demise, and he used the image of Cotri when he was trying to figure out something. Now Jade is breaking the glass and trying to figure out something and Tom shows up to help him figure it out. Tom is who had an intellectual connection with Jade at the bar when they first met. And of course, Tom doesn't have any answers because Tom is in Jade's mind. So Tom convinces Jade to face failure or even death to figure out what this thing is about. Now, the last broken glass clue is obviously Tabitha being thrown through the glass window of the tower and her being broken and looking through the glass window of the hospital room. But let's sit that to the side for a minute. I'll come back to that after we examine another clue, the timepiece. Now, we know that a timepiece or a clock has three hands that all move at their own respective speed. However, every timepiece has a converging point where all three hands come together. Now, my theory is that the symbol is a timepiece that will serve as a map and tell Jade the exact place and time that these portals open up. When Jade arrived to Colony House, he was unconscious and Trudy notices his watch and tries to take it, but is stopped by Ellis. She goes on to say that he won't need it, but Ellis insists that she leave him alone. Now all the way to the finale of season two, Jade still has his watch on and he's the only person that I've noticed wearing a timepiece. Let me know in the comments if you've seen anyone else wearing a watch. Other than that, I've noticed a few clocks in various places that all display different times. Colony house, the tunnels, the clinic, and I think there's a clock in Boyd's office. And all of these clocks have different faces, just like the symbols. However, Jade is the only person wearing a watch. Now, in the Western society of America, most people view time as a linear occurrence. However, most of America's indigenous cultures perceive time to be circular, meaning there is no definite beginning or ending. Most believe that death was not an end, but only a milestone in the circle of time. Now, if it's one thing that this show knows, it's some stones and circles. And the road to this place doesn't seem to have a beginning or an ending. Now, the line about Jade not needing his watch weren't just some filler bars to introduce the sticky fingers of Trudy living in Colony House. It was a subtle way to draw attention to Jade wearing a watch. I think it's safe to trust the showrunners when they say nothing is by accident on this show especially when there are more clues that connect to the watch, and we're going to get into those right now. But first, we have to get into the inner workings of a timepiece and what makes the hands move. The gears make the hands move. Now, the symbol in the book and the visions has been revealed to be the tree root. We know this because of the definition of the drawings are an exact match to the contour of the roots. 
Moreover, it's the exact perspective of someone who is looking up. And if the symbols are different in the book, then that means that the roots would have to be moving to make different symbols for those visions to occur. That makes me think about the gears again. Now call me crazy, but the stone arrangement that the ghoulish children are laying on sure does look like the shape of a gear. So are they the proverbial gear that is making the roots move? If we look at the music box, like the watch, we know that the gears inside is what makes the music play and the ballerina spin. When Boyd breaks the music box, we get a clear shot of the gears. When the music box was broken, so was the spell of the cicadas. Now, if you made it this far through the video, then you're probably tapped into the vibe and you know what I'm going to say next. That's right, the gears on the lighthouse. We got the dopest shot of the gears on the lighthouse that make the light turn, just like the ballerina and just like the hands on a clock. And that brings us right back to the broken glass. The spinning light in the tower had broken glass, and Tabitha passed through broken glass in order to end up somewhere else. I wonder if breaking the tower would break this curse, like breaking the music box broke the curse of the nursery rhyme. I'd like to point out that the writers have put together a dialogue with a lot of profanity or curse words. Now, our signatures are also written in cursive. And when your signature is on something, you're bound to it, like a spell or a curse. A curse can also be a binding spell, and that's exactly what Randall, Marielle, and Julie were under. Cursive writing also looks like a string or a rope. And we've seen Jade with the string in the cursed tunnel. There was also a rope in the cursed lighthouse. Now, I just want to give my thoughts on the cursed nursery rhyme real quick. I don't think they touch, they break, they steal was referring to the victims at all. I think it's referring to the cicadas. Sarah clears this up with Kenny when she tells him that it got excited when it touched his arm. Then they broke Paula and Reggie mentions how fragile and easy to break we are. And then third, they stole the three's minds and chained them up where Martin was. They touch, they break, they steal. Here, they come. It wasn't talking about the victims. It was talking about the cicadas. And finally, my first video has got people saying that Martin threw the rope down with his toenail. And when I said that, it was just a joke. But after noticing that whenever the music box is present, that it's some sort of hallucination or a dream happening. That led me to believe that the rope was part of a dream state trance by the evil spirit that was released from the bottle. The cut on Boyd's arm was possible, just like the burn on Kenny's arm and Elgin spitting up the t-shirt juice. This trance is also what the three experienced when the cicadas were going through their mouth. That's why no one else could see them. So let me hear some thoughts about your timepiece in the broken glass in the comments. Just a little something to think about while we wait on the next episode. That's all for my video today. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.